All right, good morning everyone. My name is Jesse Hildebrand and welcome to another exciting edition of Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. For those who don't know, Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants is all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. I'm excited today to say we're joined by four classes from around North America. We might get a fifth a little later on. So I'm going to go one by one through them and give them a chance to introduce themselves. First, we have Miss Adam's class from Henrico, Virginia. Say hi. Uh, Hello. Hello. Hola. 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 We got an we got an Ola in there. All right, we have Mrs. Lucy Antonio's class from. <laughs> All right, we've got Miss Vic's class from Fitzroy Harbor, Ontario. Hey. Hi guys. Hi. And Hello. Then finally, Mr. Wigmore's class from Brampton Burnt Elm School. <laughs> awesome. All right, and the reason you're all here today, of course, is to hear our speakers. We're joined by Julie Vimet and Michel Lebrec from Quebec. They run N2 Picks. They have the greatest job in the world. They get to explore all the oceans of the world, diving with shipwrecks, diving with sharks, diving with some of the most amazing creatures and places in the world. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to them. They can share their love of the underwater world with all of us. Thank you so much for being with us here today, guys. Thank you. Thanks. So what we want to talk about today is uh, an expedition uh, we did to uh, Clipperton Atoll. Uh, so we're going to show you some uh, images of uh, this, ex this uh, scientific mission. So are you guys seeing our screen? Yep, we got it. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, where is Clipperton at all? If you look on the map, you'll see a big uh, white dot over there. Uh, that's the atoll. And the departure was from uh, the southern tip of uh, Baja California in Mexico. Uh, we had to go there by boat. And uh, Clipperton is actually considered the most isolated atoll on the planet. Uh, it's French and it's uh, 768 nautical miles from where we left, so you see it's 1,280 kilometers from Acapulco uh, to 2,400 kilometers from the Galapagos, so it's really far off. It's in the middle of nowhere, basically. And the reason why we were going there is we wanted to try to establish that there's a shark migration corridor that starts from Mexico and goes right down to the Galapagos. And we wanted to show that Clipperton that's right in the middle of that plays a vital role in protecting sharks because if they're in trouble in Clipperton, that means they can't go freely from one place to the other. So that's the boat we used to get there. Uh, it's our expedition platform. The Kinoa Guardian is uh, 87 foot in length, which is about uh, 20 something meters, 24 meters, I think. And uh, that's the uh, aerial view of the atoll. As you can see inside the island, there's a, a huge amount of water, which is called lagoon. It's uh, all fresh water inside. You see it here uh, under a different angle. Basically, the atoll is shaped a bit like a donut. So uh, to get onto the land, you have to actually go through all the waves that you see that are pretty big. Um, so it's pretty treacherous to actually set foot on the island. And here you have a photo of Michelle and I while we're underwater. Uh, we have a flag with us. This is the Explorers Club flag. Uh, it's actually a flag that's been used uh, to go to different places in the world. Some people have brought flags to Mount Everest, to the moon, and, e and to the deepest point of the ocean. And now the flag's been to Clipperton. Clipperton, as uh, Julie mentioned, is uh, a French territory. And uh, nobody can go there unless you get a special authorization from the French government, uh, which we had. So everything was conducted uh, legally with the French uh, government uh, approval. So here uh, you'll see a short video of uh, the journey to get uh, to the atoll. After intense preparations, our expedition platform is ready to greet team members arriving from the four corners of the globe.
All are excited to be embarking on this very unique citizen science expedition, one that can set wheels in motion and kickstart the process of creating a marine protected area around the bridge of the top. Today begins the journey to reach the island, located 768 nautical miles from our departure point in San Jose del Cabo. Before we set sail, we complete a last minute check of the onboard safety equipment. Once in Clipperton, we will be out of reach of rescue. Stabilizers are deployed for our epic crossing. Finally, we are on our way, hoping for smooth sailing and calm seas. At dawn on day six of our journey, 117 hours after casting off, we finally set eyes on land. Clipperton is in sight. So as you can see, uh, it was a pretty long journey to get there and sometime in nasty weather. So five days in the ocean without seeing land and we finally see the island for the first time. So we're really excited to get there. And also, as you can see, uh, the weather was not uh, very nice. Uh, so the waves were high. And uh, like we mentioned, we needed to cross those, uh, those breakers to get on the atoll and uh, land on the uh, island. Um, this is uh, when we had to go to the island. Uh, you see that the, the little boat, the Zodiac, uh, stand uh, behind the surf zone. And we had to go with uh, fins, uh, snorkel, and uh, mask to get there. Which was not a fun ride. And uh, one of the interesting things <clears throat> that you see as soon as you set foot on the island is the humongous number of birds. There are birds everywhere. The birds that you see there have like a mask on their face. They're called masked boobies. And it's uh, considered the biggest colony of masked boobies in the world. And also when you're walking on the island, the other thing you notice right away is these, these little crabs. Uh, there are actually hundreds of thousands of these and they roam everywhere. Uh, we talked about the lagoon inside the atoll, inside the island. Uh, that's a view of the lagoon. As you see, it's pretty big and it's all composed of uh, fresh water. And there's actually a uh, fish that live in the lagoon as well. Um, one of the things uh, we had to do in our mission is to document the island. And uh, on the next expedition, we want to document the lagoon because um, there's no pass that connects the lagoon to the ocean. And uh, one day it's gonna open up because of the erosion and we want to document the whole island and the ecosystem before it's gonna change. So it's like um, an outside laboratory. 
And one of the sad things that you do see when you get on the island is there's plastic and garbage everywhere. And all this garbage basically comes from the ocean because nobody has been living on this island for over 70 years. And uh, you even find uh, things like this is all uh, old gun parts or ammunitions or bombs that have been left over from uh, World War II. And uh, some of them were actually still live, so they could still explode. And recently the French government has gone because this was reported several times. Uh, the army went and they actually blew everything up that was dangerous, so it's not dangerous anymore. And they brought uh, also a um, uh, pile of those, so uh, slowly they're starting to uh, clean up uh, the atoll as well. Uh, we mentioned the plastic. If you look carefully on the bottom of the bottle, uh, you'll see that you can read Honduras. Uh, this bottle has been traveling all the way from Honduras in uh, Central America uh, to the atoll. Um, most of the plastic we found that we can trace where they were coming from were all coming from uh, or North America or South America, both, but mostly from South and Central America. So that's a long journey. Um, here's a short video of what it's like on the atoll. Lost in the Pacific Ocean, Clipperton looks like paradise from above. Considered as the most isolated atoll in the world, as Clipperton's remoteness and isolation protected it. Once on land, we are quickly forced to realize that left to fend for itself, the island has not escaped man's wrath. Walking around the atoll is a surreal experience. We are shocked by the contrast between the rugged beauty of the island and the ugly traces left by man's passage several decades ago, and now by modern worldwide pollution. A refuge, the most important colony of mass movies in the world. The second largest colony of ground movies. And millions of land birds. Life on the atoll is a non stop fight for survival. Clipperton is an unforgiving place. Only the strongest survive. And far from surveillance, the island's waters have become the object of intense illegal fishing. This threatens not only the aquatic ecosystem, but also the survival of bird populations who rely on the ocean to feed. Can Clipperton resist? Can we manage to protect it? So now to the exciting part for us because the reason why we wanted to go to Clipperton was to see what was happening underwater. Um, one of the first things we saw when we got close to the island were dolphins that were swimming beside our boat. So we were really excited to see them. Well, one of the things we wanted to, uh, to see was uh, on the water was the larger animal and uh, also was the object of our mission. We're going to talk about it uh, a little bit later. Uh, what we found on the water was a pristine ecosystem. Um, there's millions of fish everywhere. There's tons of them. And the reef is very gorgeous. Uh, it's been estimated by the uh, census we've done on the reef that the, the coral coverage was exceeding 60% and at some point 80%, uh, which is uh, probably one of the best places in the world. 
And uh, one thing that's very interesting about Clipperton, it's a bit like the Galapagos, maybe you've heard of them. Uh, there are endemic species. What that means is that there are animals there that you can see nowhere else on Earth. And if you notice in the middle of this picture, there are two little bluefish that we're gonna see on this next shot a bit better. They are called Clipperton angelfish, and you cannot find them anywhere else in the world. They're really valuable. People who collect them for aquariums will pay up to $10,000 for one fish, but it's illegal to collect them. This is Here, the, uh, that's another one called the uh, Clipperton Gregory, the one in brown and yellow. Uh, that's another endemic species. And there's also uh, this one called the Clipperton Grouper, which again is another, another uh, unique fish. One of the really cool things about uh, scuba diving in Clipperton is you can see these eels. Now, usually eels are hidden <coughs> away in cracks and they're really shy, but in Clipperton, they are completely fearless. And they'll swim between your legs and that's really neat. Here you see um, some uh, golden rim surgeon fish, the one with the yellow rim. Um, and uh, there's many, many of them, like many of the other fish. Uh, we talked about uh, the dolphins. On the east side of the atoll, we found a pod that was very curious. And they came, uh, while we were scuba diving, they came right at us and uh, check us out. And that was pretty, pretty cool. And the reason, again, why we were going to Clipperton was to find out how healthy the shark population is. Since in the middle of the, it's in the middle of the ocean, we would think that there would be sharks everywhere. Uh, but sadly, we saw very few of them and very few adults. Like this is a hammerhead shark, and we only saw three of these and really far off in the distance. We were, however, able to see a lot of these little guys. They're called silver tips. And... Um, and as you can see on this photo, uh, they're very small, they're, they're juvenile sharks, uh, which is a good news in the way that if you have lots of juveniles, that means that it's a nursery. And if you, uh, if you stop fishing them, that means that you can, um, uh, they can reproduce and uh, the population will grow to adults eventually. Um, but like we said, they've been fished out. As you might know, uh, the sharks are fished for their fins. They cut off their fins and they dump the carcass back in the ocean uh, because the fins is very valuable. It's worth more than drugs. So there's a lot of trafficking of those fins in the world. So if they're not inside a marine protected area, they fish them. And in Clipperton, because it's so far away, they fish them illegally. What you see on the bottom of the screen here is called a long line. It's a fishing line that they uh, put down in the ocean to uh, fish for sharks. And what's really sad is when we're scuba diving, we see these lines everywhere. And this boat that you see was actually an illegal fishing boat that we saw on the second day that we arrived on the island. Uh, they were inside the 12 nautical mile zone, which they're not in, allowed to be in. And as you can see, this boat is really equipped. It was like three times the size of our boat. There's a helicopter. So these boats can do huge damage when they're fishing. Uh, this device that you see we found on the island, it's a solar powered device. They put it on a raft and it floated in the middle of the ocean and fish uh, hide under the raft. And when there's enough fish, it sends a signal to the boat and they just come and they pick everything up. Here you see uh, some fishing nets. Again, you can find that on the atoll everywhere. And you see on the top of the screen a buoy. Uh, that's another fishing uh, gear. So there's many, many of them on, on the atoll, which proves that there's a lot of illegal fishing going around. Next, we have a short video that shows you what it was like scuba diving under, under the atoll. Having spent a day on the island, we turn our attention on the oceans. How has it been affected by what we have seen on the surface? As we submerge for the first time, we are somewhat apprehensive, but are immediately relieved to see that the reefs of Clipperton are in much better state than the island. The reefs are colorful and busy with fish. We quickly spot our first sharks, 
juvenile silvertips and are hopeful given the objectives of our mission. We focus our attention on assessing the number of species that are present on the reef and on getting images of endemic species. So <clears throat> what you see on the screen here is the, the reason why we went to Clipperton was the main objective was to tag sharks. Um, and what you see here is called acoustical tags. Uh, there's a little device that sends a signal, uh, like a beep signal, and it's going to be catched by a listening station that you'll see later on. Um, you see it's very small it's uh there's a some uh, gummy shark to give you a scale it's about the size of um, a, a finger so it's not very very big and what we had to do is to uh, make a surgery to the shark you, you see the shark is on uh, on his back and uh it's been inserted just underneath the skin um the surgery is done by a vet that was on board um in this expedition and each time we would tag a shark, we have to fill out a form, like you see here, that says what kind of shark it is, how big it was, uh, if it's a boy or if it's a girl. So that helps us keep track of which shark we've tagged. And here you see the listening station. That's what picks up the signal when uh, the shark swims by. So there are a few of those underwater around the island. It's going to record all the data that, that and uh, we have to retrieve them and download them with a the computer to get the, all the, uh, to, to have access to all the data. Uh, what you see here is another type of tags we use. Uh, it's, it's put on the dorsal fin of the shark just behind and it's a satellite tag. So it's going to record all the data. Uh, from the shark and what you see that is shaped like a pier here is a buoy So after six months is gonna detach from the sharks and float to the surface and with the antenna is gonna send all the data to a satellite and it's gonna be relayed to the, the laboratory after that so this gives you an idea of what the information uh, looks like when scientists uh, get it. Um, basically, these tags are hard to use because they're really expensive, but they give you really good information on where the shark's been. And uh, basically, if we come back to the initial reason 
for going to Clipperton. And we wanted uh, to get information to convince the French government to protect the island because we think it's, it plays a really important role uh, for shark protection and other species also. And uh, we're super happy to say that um, we didn't expect this to happen so quickly, but in September, uh, we had really good news. In fact, uh, the French government, uh, the French um, Minister of Environment announced on September 15 that they're going to create a marine reserve uh, around the atoll, 12 nautical miles that's going to be protected. So that's a very, very good step, a uh, very good uh, start. Uh, because what we wanted uh, is to, we, we did prove that there were some connection between the other islands, uh, but what we wanted is to have a uh, hundred nautical miles to be protected. Uh, but it's a good start with 12, and hopefully next year we're going to return. Uh, we receive a second authorization to conduct a mission there, um, and we're going to bring more data, and hopefully uh, it's going to help to enlarge the uh, protected area. Well, that's it for the, um, presentation. the presentation. We're back. Can you see us? Not quite yet, almost. Almost? <laughs> Getting there. But that was excellent, guys, and I'm so happy to hear that the conservation's already in place and the 12 miles zone's in place. Uh, well done and way to go. So while they're getting it back to their, their regular screen so we can actually see them, what we'll do is we'll turn to a question and answer period. So I'm going to go to Miss Adam's class first. Uh, as long as they can hear us, that's good. Uh, and then if you guys want to go ahead and ask a question, uh, Michelle and Julie will answer. I grab ask a question. How how do you um how, um, how, what tools did you use like to get on the bottom of the ocean? Like what did you use to get on there? We, uh, we have scuba tanks. It's a tank that is filled with uh, air. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just so compressed that it's, it's not too big. And uh, we use that to breathe on the water. So we go with uh, fins and mask, and we have that device that uh, allows us to breathe on the water. Cool, eh? Very cool. Thank you. <laughs> You're almost there, Michelle and Julie. Almost. Uh, I guess there's something we need to click on somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so it should be within the green button, the screen share again. Somewhere in there it should uh, have an option to end it. But while you're still trying that, I'll go to Mrs. Lucy Antonio's class. All right, I have heard it. How long have you been researching the ocean? How about that? How long have you been researching the ocean? Uh, we've been uh, we've been do. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. We've been, uh, full time since um, uh, ten years, uh, but it's been. Uh, uh, Sorry, we've been doing that part-time 10 years, but we've been doing it uh, full-time since two years. Excellent. Excellent question. Uh, since Julie's put on her shark hat, I'm going to put on my shark hat, too. Uh, it's a live for posterity. Uh, I have one, but it's, it's kind of broken. <laughs> oh, no. We could have had three shark hats. <laughs> Next time, we'll get the classes, too. All right. Well, we'll go to Mrs. Vick's class. Uh, you guys go right ahead. Okay, look into the camera. Hi. Hello. Really loud. And then ask it in English. How long can you I'm sorry, the, the sound wasn't very good. Can, can you hear it? Uh, uh, I can hear it. It was how long do hammerhead sharks live? Oh, that's a tough question. Uh, scientists have don't know much about sharks and don't know much about hammerheads because they're really hard to study. Um, we've heard numbers like 40 years for some species, 25 for others, but that's really not something we know a lot about. Can I just ask if you have a link to tracking your trackers? Is there a way that we here can track your trackers? Like OSEARCH has 
Shark Tracker, do you have anything like that in place yet? Uh, not yet. Um, it, there's some data that is available, uh, but it's not live like uh, OSearch uh, have done. Um, it's in the plan to have um, to have a link for next the, the next expedition on our website, though. So um, we'll be glad to share it uh, as soon as, as it's going to be in place and uh, we have uh, new tags. So for the next expedition, we'll get you all back exploring by the seat of your pants once again. Sure. Uh, so we'll go to Mr. Wigmore's class. Savannah, then me. Um, what what could we do to like help the ocean stop being polluted? I think one of the first things we need to do is limit the plastic we use. It's super important because it floats everywhere and it will just go from one end of the planet to the other. So when you drink water, for example, uh, reuse your bottles um, and be very mindful of that because it's the simple things like plastic forks when you eat to try to keep them, to wash them. So those are simple things you can do to help the ocean. Ask to not have straws in your drinks and, uh, and also uh, when you go to the grocery, you can bring like uh, recyclable uh, bags instead of using the plastic bags. So everything plastic, uh, that you can uh, eliminate that's going to be very good for the ocean. Excellent question. question. Excellent much. answer, guys. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go back to Mrs. Adams' class. Do you want to come up to the question? I do. Okay. Come on up. Can I do? I will slow down a little bit so you can see the face. There you go. What do you use to rescue sharks? To rescue sharks? I think one of the first things that we need to do is to have people understand that sharks are not are not mean animals uh, and to take care of them. And I guess the best way to rescue them is to sort of leave them alone and just let them do their thing. Um, just let them swim freely in the ocean. And uh, the, by creating marine protected area, uh, that's the best way to uh, protect the sharks as well. So hopefully we're going to create more of those area. I have a quick question, Michelle and Julie. So you mentioned that there was a boat there that was illegally fishing already. Now that there's a marine protected zone, will there be someone patrolling that area, making sure there are no boats like that? Yes. Uh, in fact, there's uh, some talks at the moment to uh, build a permanent scientific base camp on the island. So that's going to be the eyes for the government. And also, um, there's been many uh, scientific missions uh, over the past 10 years uh, more than they were before. So all the reports from those missions all come to the same conclusion that we need to protect the area, we need to, uh, to uh, make more surveillance, and also uh, what they want to do right now, which is going to be a good thing, is to emphasize on the, uh, uh, on the uh, uh, fine that they, they're going to give to uh, the illegal fishing boat. Uh, because if you don't find them or you don't uh, arrest them, uh, there's no use. And, and they are doing uh, surveillance uh, through satellites right now. And so, so we, you know, they know that there are boats there. So it's just take the time to get this all in place because this, this is really new. Like we said, it was announced on September 15th. So it's going to take a little while before all of this starts working efficiently. Excellent. All right. So we'll go back to Mrs. Lucy Antonio. Lucy Antonio. How old were you when you first started diving? Uh, I started, the, the first time I breathed uh, underwater was at eight, eight years old. So it's the, it's the age you can start to uh, scuba dive. That's pretty cool. And at 10 years old, you can be a scuba diver, certified scuba diver. So, so all of you can pretty much try it. How about that? <laughs> Best. Best class trip ever. We'll plan that afterwards. <laughs> yeah, everyone get licensed. All right, so I know they asked one a little earlier. It's kind of difficult to hear, but Mrs. Vick's class can actually ask you questions in French, which is wonderful. So if you guys want to go ahead and do that, go right ahead. I'm right in front, really loud. How is Louder. How Louder, like you're out on the schoolyard trying to get somebody's attention. <laughs> How is the campus here? What is it? Sorry, I, 
What, what, what's your favorite shark, guys? Yeah, so, c'est quoi notre requin préféré? That's the question, I guess. Um, I don't, I, I like them all, but um, I really like great hammerheads. They're really pretty. And they're sort of weird looking with their big heads, with their eyes on the side. So they're really cool. But um, I would have said great hammerhead as well, le grand requin marteau. Uh, but I really like also the silver tip that we saw in uh, Clipperton and the first time we saw one was in Fiji and uh, I found it like very sleek and very unique. So I guess that uh, I'll go with silver tips. Whale sharks are kind of cool also. Whale so sharks are very cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go back to Mrs. Rigmore's class. When you just got on the island and it was all litter, did you clean it up? No, we couldn't because there was too many uh, trashes uh, to bring that on the boat. It, it, we would need like four or five or six boats to clean all the trash because there are so many. But um, what we did is uh, we bring back everything we brought on the island so we have uh, not polluted ourselves the island and there is a plan for the next mission to start cleaning up uh, the, a part of the island so with many 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 missions uh, it's going to be clean again well that's wonderful news yeah. All right, we're, we're, we're I putting it that, sorry I just want to add that um, uh, even if you clean the island it's not going to be clean never going to be clean if we don't stop to pollute the ocean to begin with because um, the, the plastic has not come by human, has come by, by the oceanic current. So, so we need to stop to do it ourselves so that this island can be clean one day. So that goes back to our earlier question. If you guys don't have straws in your drinks, you reduce plastic pollution, then that's the only way we'll really make sure the island is clean. Excellent point, guys. Uh, we're a little ahead of time, so if we want, uh, we'll go through one more round of questions. We'll go back to Mrs. Der Mrs. Adams' class. Do you guys have any more questions, Ms. Adams? Yes, we do. Perfect. Have you seen any tiger sharks? Uh, not there. Um, we were hoping to see some tiger sharks, but um, for some reason, I guess that there were not very, um, uh, that there were not a lot of them uh, to begin with, and maybe they've been fished out. Uh, I know there's been some that saw some tiger sharks in the past, but uh, we were not lucky. They're cool. how, about, how about generally? Have you ever seen tiger sharks, though? Yes. Yes. They're pretty yeah. impressive, and they have really nice markings. All right. So we'll go back to Mrs. Uh, Miss Lucy Antonio's class. Have you ever seen a turtle? Sea turtle. Sea turtle. Sea turtle. Sea turtle. Oh, a bunch of them. On our last trip, actually, they were everywhere and super curious and friendly. They're just sit there on the reef and eat away and don't even care if you're beside them so yeah they're really cool they're and you pretty. don't you don't have to go very far to to see them uh there's a bunch of them in the u.s uh like um if you go in florida for instance you, you're gonna see turtles for sure so you just have to go uh, with the uh, mask and snorkel and fins and um, you can actually see some turtles that's pretty cool and since you're talking about turtles, back to the plastic bags. They think they're food and they eat them, so no plastic bags. Use paper or instead or just bring your own bags with you, reusable bags. Great way of uh, making sure that you don't add plastic pollution. Uh, we'll go back to Ms. Ms. Fix class. Is the Clipperton Atoll close to one of the five gyres? Um, it's actually uh, in the middle of three ocean currents. Yeah, it's there's a, it, it's pretty much at the intersections of uh, of uh, the three three of the five gyres. Uh, so that's one of the reason there's so much plastic on the atoll. It's it's gonna go because the uh, the island is very low lying. Um, which means that every time there's a big waves, it brings all the plastic onto the, the island. So that's why there are so many on the island. That was a great question. Just if you could tell the rest of the classes what the five gyres are, that would be lovely. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. 
Okay, well, the, the gyres are the um, uh, a current that, uh, that, uh, that goes uh, um, at five different places in the world. And um, it's, it's a current that accumulates everything that's going to float, like plastic, for instance. And uh, eventually, with, with that current, it's going to bring plastic to some land. So, uh, like Clipperton or other places, you've, you might have heard of the uh, plastic vortex. Uh, that's the same phenomena uh, that's happening right there. So it's basically different currents that are pushing all the plastic together, and it sort of turns like a, like a circle. Excellent. Thank you so much, guys. And then last but not least, we'll go back to Mr. Wigmore's class. Um, how many fish did you track under the fish tracker? We, uh, we were hoping to, to tag uh, adults, sharks, because the adults are the ones that are moving um, uh, more than the small babies. The babies tend to stay uh, around the island for protection. So because there were no adults, we didn't tag as much as we wanted to. We had uh, a total of uh, 15 uh, tags, but we only used three of them, three acoustical tags and two satellite tags. So we had uh, five tags installed on sharks. But a great start nonetheless. <laughs> Next expedition. Well, thank you so, so much for being with us here today. Uh, what we do at the end of every Hangout is leave it open to the classes, do a big screaming thank you, and thank uh, to say goodbye. So I'm going to demute all the microphones of all the phones and all the want to thank, thank, and Julie. <laughs> awesome. So, Thanks so much for being with us here today, everyone. Uh, we hope to have you exploring by the seat of your pants again soon. And thank you to Michelle and Julie for being with us here today and telling us all about your expedition. Thank you for having us, and thank you, classes, for joining us. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day, guys.